Hey everyone, my name is Jonathan Munshaw. I am the communication specialist here with Cisco Talos. And today I'm here to talk to you about these things. So I call this Google, you might call yours uh, Siri or Alexa or Apple, whatever you happen to have in your home. But they are smart speakers or you know, you could call them like a uh, smart AI device, an IoT device uh, that sit on your network. And they can basically help you do a lot of stuff around the house like play music, control your lights, read your recipes while you cook. And a lot of you might be getting them as a holiday present this year. And you might be a little bit hesitant to set them up because there are some privacy and security concerns that come with using them. And a lot of people think, oh, this speaker is going to be on 24-7 in my house listening to me. So today I want to show you how to set one of these up securely uh, with cybersecurity in mind and your privacy in mind. Keep in mind while I kind of go through these tutorials, I'm going to be using this, again, which is a Google, a Google Home Mini. Uh, and I'm also going to be using Android 12 on my mobile device. So everything may look a little bit different for you, but the practices are still the same regardless of what platform you're using. So first up, we want to make sure that we are enabling voice and facial recognition. Whether your device has a camera or a microphone, there are ways to set this up so that you and only the trusted users in your household can issue commands to these smart devices. To enable this, uh, we're going to go to Assistant Settings, then voice match, and then add a device. Then you'll need to follow some prompts to allow your device to recognize your voice or face. According to Google and other smart device manufacturers, this information is only stored locally on the device, and you can opt out of sharing voice data with the company. Your level of comfortability with these settings will determine whether this is the right choice for you or not. Next, uh, we're gonna go through how to enable multi-factor authentication. This is something that Talos preaches all the time, and it's certainly not exclusive to these types of devices. But enabling MFA ensures that you and only the users you trust are logging into these devices and accessing their contents. To do this, go to Google Home. Then we're gonna tap Assistant Settings in the Home app. Then scroll down to Your Data in the Assistant. Then click on More Options to Manage Your Privacy. Then scroll until you see the option that reads Google Account. Under signing into Google, click use your phone to sign in and then set it up. Next, you'll have a few options to choose from. Either you can have a push notification sent to your mobile device alerting you that someone is trying to log in, and you can either confirm or deny that login, or you can receive a passcode to your email that you'll need to enter to successfully sign in. Personally, I have the push notification option enabled. If your phone asks if you want to use either facial recognition or fingerprint identification, depending upon what your hardware has, uh, you can also opt into this. Once you successfully log in uh, by running a test on your phone, you'll be able to click on the box that says turn on to enable MFA anytime someone tries logging in to your account associated with this device. Next, we're going to take a look at how these devices store and track your data. While we're on the screen, we can dive into some other privacy and security options available to us. These options may look different based on the manufacturer, but all devices will allow you to opt out of some tracking and delete personal information. For example, Amazon's Alexa smart home devices allow users to go in and delete individual conversations or commands that you've given from the smart home device. In Google Home, though, you can head to the Google Assistant activity page. And here we can tell Google to pause all tracking and monitoring activity. This is the safest option privacy-wise, but could also cause the device not to function as well as you'd like it or not at all, so you're going to kind of have to test that out. Alternatively, you can go back into the Your Data in the Assistant page and click on My Activity. Then under Tap Keep Activity, you can set whether you want Google to keep a history of the device's activity forever or until you manually delete it or set the data to be deleted automatically every three months or 18 months. If you want to stick with the manual option, you can head to the option that says Delete Activity By, and here you can choose if you want to delete all data collected in the last hour, the last day, or set a custom range, say from the time you started using the device until the start of this month. Make sure you click on the appropriate confirmation buttons to ensure that all those settings are locked in. Lastly, we have to talk about patching. Again, this goes for any internet connected device you're bringing into your home, but we also need to make sure that the latest security patches are installed on your device. Hopefully this happens automatically as part of the installation process, but it never hurts to check to make sure that you're protected from any worst case scenario bugs that attackers might be looking for. Every app is gonna have its own way of doing this, but for Google, we open the Home app, select a Google Home speaker, 
Then we're gonna tap the device settings button and scroll down to the bottom. And here you can see the current system firmware. Then you can check this firmware version with the current list on Google's website. I'll be linking to this page uh, down below in the description, along with the security update pages for Apple and Amazon Alexa for folks who have those devices. If the firmware versions don't match up, you'll need to restart your device by unplugging it, waiting a few minutes, and then plugging it back in. If the issue persists, you'll need to perform a factory reset, uh, which we don't really have time to cover in this video, but is fairly straightforward enough to do. Now, keep in mind that every time you go to connect a new device on your network, there's always going to be an inherent risk, whether it's a TV, a washing machine, your toothbrush. So you need to be keeping these security practices in mind anytime you're bringing a new wireless device in your home. But for now, I hope that these tips uh, have given you some peace of mind while you're setting up your new AI system, and hopefully they uh, can read your cookie recipes to you faster while keeping the bad guys out.